Assalamu alaikum. I am Abida and I am going to teach you analytical chemistry 2, Chem 508. This course is prescribed for BS Chemistry 6 semester, session 2017-21. So today we are going to discuss properties of light and its interaction with matter. Light consists of electromagnetic radiation that is it has an electric part and magnetic part. Here electric part of light radiation is represented by blue wave while magnetic part is represented by red wave. So these electric and magnetic fields they are perpendicular to each other as you can see in this picture. They are not only perpendicular to each other but they are also perpendicular to direction of propagation. By means of direction of propagation I want to say that the direction in which light travels. So uh, electromagnetic radiation have uh, different properties and uh, one of the important uh, properties is wavelength. Wavelength is represented by letter lambda and uh, uh, this wavelength is the distance between two adjacent troughs or it is the distance between two adjacent crests. Uh, the more about properties of electromagnetic radiation and their relationship so uh, we have just discussed wavelength lambda which is represented by this Greek symbol uh, and its units are centimeter or meter. So uh, the units uh, used for wavelength depend upon the electromagnetic uh, region we study. For example, um, in case of UV uh, that is ultraviolet and visible region, the wavelength used is nanometer. Okay, uh, the relationship of wavelength uh, with speed of light and frequency, this can be mathematically represented as lambda is equal to C divided by nu, where C is the speed of light, uh, which has a numerical value of 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second, while nu is the frequency. Frequency is the number of waves passing through a point per unit time and it has uh, units of either second inverse or hertz. Uh, nu has a mathematical relationship with lambda that is nu is equal to c over lambda. Uh, then the third property uh, by which we can represent electromagnetic radiation is wave number and this is represented by nu bar. It has a units of centimeter inverse and it is the number of waves passing uh, through a unit distance and mathematically it can be represented as nu is equal to 1 over lambda or um, it can also be written as if we put the value of 1 over lambda then nu bar this will be equal to nu over c. Each electromagnetic radiation is also associated with energy which is represented by symbol E and for one photon of radiation uh, the units of, of energy are args. Energy uh, can be represented mathematically as E is equal to H nu where H is Planck's constant and if we put the value of nu here as nu is equal to C over lambda so this equation will become E is equal to H C over lambda. Okay, so I will actually give you uh, some other presentations I will give you through WhatsApp so you can very best understand the concept of wavelength frequency and wave number uh, through these slides. Uh, so this will come after. First you will have this presentation and uh, after that you will have three or more presentation on the topic of wavelength frequency, wave number and energy and then you will be able to understand very well about these concepts inshallah. So now we have electromagnetic spectrum uh, actually uh, the wavelengths of radiations which reach from Sun uh, on Earth uh, they consist of different parts 
uh, right? So, uh, this electromagnetic spectrum can be divided into different parts depending upon the wavelength of these regions. So, uh, we will start from gamma rays and X rays. These are highly energetic waves. So, as we have seen in the previous slide, uh, energy, uh, frequency, energy or frequency and wavelength, they are inversely proportional. It means that if an electromagnetic radiation has shorter wavelength, it must have high energy or high frequency. So, gamma rays and X rays, they lie in the shorter wavelength end of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, uh, they are of uh, shorter wavelength and highly energetic waves. They are important for uh, medical diagnosis, but for analytical purposes, um, they are not in so much use. For analytical purposes, we are mostly concerned with the next region of electromagnetic spectrum that is ultraviolet and visible region. So, ultraviolet is further divided into uh, two regions that is vacuum ultraviolet and near ultraviolet. We say it as uh, near ultraviolet because you can see that it is near to the visible region. So, uh, the ultraviolet region it extends from 10 nanometer to 380 nanometer but for analytical purposes uh, the important region is from 200 nanometer, uh, sorry, 200 nanometer to 380 nanometer, that is uh, near ultraviolet region. Uh, uh, below 200 nanometer, the air uh, absorbs appreciably, so we have to operate uh, it under vacuum, uh, which is not so easy to attain, that is why. Uh, for analytical purposes, the important region is from 200 to 380 nanometer. And then we have the visible region which extends from 380 nanometer to uh, 780 nanometer. And after that, we have infrared region. Infrared is again divided into near infrared, NACL infrared or mid infrared and far infrared uh, based on its distance from visible region. So, infrared uh, region, it extends from uh, 0.78 micrometer to uh, uh, 16 uh, micrometer. But for analytical uh, purposes, the important region is from 2.5 nanometer to 15, uh, sorry, 2.5 micrometer to 16 micrometer. So, if we take uh, this uh, in centimeter inverse actually this unit is used for infrared region most commonly or arbitrarily so if we uh, if we use a centimeter inverse then for analytical purposes that is from uh, uh, 2.5 uh, micrometer to 15 micrometer uh, which is most commonly used infrared region for analytical purposes if we take this region in units of centimeter inverse then this will be from 4000 uh, centimeter inverse to 667 uh, centimeter inverse so we use this for analytical purposes so keep this in mind uh, that infrared region is used uh, or infrared radiations these are used for the determination of functional groups in organic compounds and after that um, we have radio wave Radio waves are at the higher wavelength end of the electromagnetic spectrum, so they have the lowest energy. How does matter absorbs uh, radiation? Objects will absorb certain wavelength, uh, leaving the certain of the wavelength as transmitted, which we see as a color. This is called complementary of the uh, absorbed color. So, what will happen actually? The objects, they will absorb uh, some of the wavelength. For example, uh, white light, it consists of uh, seven colors and it has a wavelength range from uh, 380 nanometer to 780 nanometer. So, uh, if the wavelength absorbed by an object is from 380 to 450 nanometer, it means that uh, the object will absorb violet color and the remaining light which will be transmitted, they will be of the wavelength uh, having color yellow green 
so this yellow green actually this is called the complementary color or the transmitted color of the absorbed color likewise if we have for example uh, uh, a substance which will uh, for which the absorbed wavelength is 450 to 495 then uh, actually it will absorb blue light and it will transmit yellow light so it will appear yellow to the uh, human eye likewise uh, uh, if the absorbed color is yellow then the transmitted or complementary color is blue uh, and for orange absorbed color the complementary color is green blue and for red it is blue green so this is how uh, electromagnetic radiation uh, are absorbed by matter and uh, the color which we see of the objects they are of the transmitted or the then interaction of electromagnetic uh, uh, radiation with matter actually uh, now we are going to see uh, what will happen or what is the analytical uh, usage of these electromagnetic radiation with matter so what will happen actually in spectroscopic methods uh, the sample solution absorbs electromagnetic radiation from an appropriate source and the amount absorbed is related to the concentration of analyte in the solution so if we have a solution containing copper ion this will be of blue color because it will absorb complementary color yellow from the white light and transmits the remaining blue light so more concentrated uh, the copper solution the more yellow light is absorbed and deeper the resulting blue color of the solution so what will happen in spectroscopic method the amount of this yellow light absorbed would be measured and related to the concentration in this way we can uh, obtain a better understanding of absorption spectroscopy uh, or absorption spectrometry uh, so in the next lecture uh, we will actually start again from interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter and we will see uh, how electromagnetic radiation uh, they interact with molecules and after their interaction what kind of um, uh, you know motions are occurring within the molecule that is uh, translational rotational and vibrational so i will send you uh, this lecture and along with this i will also send you uh, two or three uh, uh, more presentations in order to have a better understanding uh, uh, of these topics inshallah okay students good luck uh, for this and uh, we will inshallah uh, meet soon with the next presentation